Okay, so welcome everybody for this last session of the reading groups of the links for this academic year. Uh, I see the opportunity to thank all the speakers for the three, three reading groups, to thank all the, also all the people uh, who attended the sessions. Uh, um, I will soon uh, make a call for participation for next year. Please do answer me if uh, you like the reading groups and if you attend the, the sessions, please try to uh, to be a speaker for at least one session uh, next year. It will be uh, otherwise the reading groups cannot work. Uh, and uh, so uh, for this last session, I have the great honor to um, leave the floor to Alonso. So thank you, Francois. Uh... So I I took uh, great pleasure in seeing the IP widget uh, presentation by uh, Fabian, and uh, it inspired me to uh, propose this session about any widget and also about Solara, uh, which uh, hopefully uh, you will like. So let's first uh, say okay. So what's the what's the pain? So the pain is you're a researcher, you did your research, you spent two months, uh, three months uh, reading papers, uh, perhaps years uh, reading papers, and finally you got a great result, state of the art, uh, and you want to share it with the world. And uh, uh, one way is, okay, uh, you publish in a great uh, conference, uh, and you spent uh, a few days preparing the, the slides, uh, some weeks preparing the presentation, etc. And uh, but uh, now you want to share it with the, uh, other people, in particular with people who may not have uh, a technical uh, background, but who can understand what's the result. Uh, or perhaps there is some people who have technical background, but doesn't have the time. So for example, if I want to speak with the manager of my manager, uh, he will not have the time to see uh, a thousand PDFs uh, that different researchers send him. So the, the goal is that uh, I love IP widgets and I, I really like uh, the fact that you can interact, but even if you send a notebook to the manager of my manager, it's unlikely that he will install the requirements, uh, install Python, put everything uh, in place and uh, run the notebook. So that was uh, a little bit, the, that's the pain. And uh, hopefully uh, this is uh, some sort of uh, relief. So, uh, this is what I'm going to present today. So what is Solara? Uh, I'm going to start with Solara. So there are several different options if you want to do uh, some kind of demo, some sort of uh, presentation, and Solara is not one of the most popular. So let me, let me, so this is the number of GitHub stars. So it is how much popular it is uh, a given uh, application. And here you can see that Streamlit is the most popular one. Uh, followed closely by Gradio. Uh, Gradio is the one from Hugging Face. Streamlit is the one from uh, Snowflake. Uh, there is Holovis panel, which is coming from NVIDIA. And then late, later, it's Solara and uh, Shiny. To be honest, the ones that I most like, the, the most like are the two last, Solara and Shiny. I also like very much Streamlit, but... Uh, uh, but we will see what are the problems with these uh, different uh, options. Okay, so this graph also tells us some other things which I think are relevant. So one of the things is that it seems it's a relatively old product. And old means also mature, which means usually when Streamlit release, uh, launch a new release, your application still work uh, because it's a mature product. Uh, they try to keep uh, uh, that it is uh, maintainable over time, so this is good. Second thing that it is so popular, it has two other things. One is documentation. So the documentation is much clearer than others. Uh, for example, Solara. Chinese has a relatively good documentation. Uh, and the, other, the third thing, which is also not negligible, is network effect which means that there is a lot of people doing Streamlit apps, which means that deployment, when people propose to deploy apps, uh, they usually think about Streamlit. Uh, they, they, they make things far, uh, easier for Streamlit people. Uh, 
uh, Stripe or other kind of uh, add-ons can be done in Streamlit. And uh, Streamlit also has the, the other thing is that there is this community, like there is a lot of people, there is like some sort of uh, Reddit of uh, people working on Streamlit. And that makes that if you have a problem, you can sometimes find an answer in this uh, community blogs, uh, etc. While the others is more uh, complicated. Okay, so these are the advantages of Streamlit. So uh, what's the proposal of Solara? So Solara proposes the following. So Solara says, we are not the easiest one to start with, but as your app size grows, uh, the code complexity should remain stable. So that's the promise and we will see. So this is from the website of Solara. Uh, but uh, the, basically the competitor, which I think is here is extreme leech, is it is much easier to get started, but as your uh, app size grows, the code complexity grows. And we will see this uh, hopefully with some examples and see if this is true. Okay. Uh, so first, how do you work with Solara? So it's simply pip install Solara. How do you run it? Uh, Solara run your app. And uh, yes, I, don't know, I need to go back one second. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go to the basic app. And for this, I'm going to uh, to come here. So here I have a Solara app. So here is the app. Here is uh, the browser where it is running. So it's just an iframe, but okay. So this is uh, some sort of. Uh, uh, where it is running and here it is the terminal where I'm running it. So this is simply, you can see, I just put Solara run the name of the app, which is Solara app. And uh, I will perhaps start with Streamlit. So <laughs> Streamlit is much easier. So if if I have a Streamlit app, this is what a Streamlit app looks like. So it's six lines of code. And normally if I, uh, so the first thing to notice is that you install Streamlit. If you put a title, this will already run. Uh, let's see. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, for our viewers, how this should be a good when in doubt. When in doubt, uh, refresh. Okay, no. Okay, it refuses to work. Uh, I mean, the good one. If I see the green, if I see the green. Okay. Which is going to make things less interactive, I guess. Uh, I don't want to do that. Let's see if this works. It doesn't work. Yeah, probably. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, but normally it should give me the option to yeah. refresh. Mm -hmm. And if you restart, yes, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Okay. I not solve. Which ah, is good. That's progress. Good. That's yeah, progress. Okay. <laughs> Great. So, okay. So, if you just put still uh, import Streamlit and you put a title, it should work. It's very easy to get started. You add, you add a description. So, this is a text. So, if you are uh, most people, so most people just use uh, write actually. You can instead, if it is a text, you can put text, but most people, they are usually just, just write. It should just uh, work also, it's the same. 
and uh, you can add a button. So if you add a button, uh, for example, here, uh, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to remove this because this is not needed. I'm going to use it later, perhaps. I just put what I want to display in that button. Um, okay. And here it should be. And as you see, here is the app. You put click me and it puts hey there. So which should be the same as here. If you put uh, read me, it should be the same. So this is uh, an app and this can be deployed, of course, and this can be uh, 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 shared then. You just share the link and uh, you have this uh, app. Okay. So now let's see what Solara has to offer. So Solara is much longer text, if you, if you notice. And uh, we will go also line by line for this first application. So we first are going to consider just the title. So let me start. So would you import Solara? Then you, everything in Solara is a component. So that's important. Then inside this component, you will define one important component, which is going to be page, which is going to be the main one. So this is going to be the main component. And, and then, the page, yeah, it. yes. So the, 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 the convention is that since it's a component, you start with uppercase. If it is a function, you start with lowercase, but if it's a component, you start with uppercase. This is a convention because I think it works even if you put lowercase. But and, and page, page is, um, the reserved uh, keyword, or you can call it uh, blah blah. I can call it blah blah. I will call it blah blah later, yeah, and please. then you can. I know, but but then to run it, if I want to run it, I, I'm going to show different things. So one uh, one of the advantages of Solara is that you can run it on the notebook, okay. and in then you can display it whenever you want. But if you want to display it in a uh, like if you want to deploy it, uh, you need to it need to be the main it needs to be main. Otherwise, it cannot detect that it is the main. Uh, Okay, so this is, if you want to just put the title, you need to already add this new, new two lines, which is, uh, you need to define that it is a component and you need to define that it's a main page. But later you can see, okay, this is, uh, is going to be uh, the title. Uh, you can put a description, this is a Solara app. And here, ideally you would like to put a button like in the other one. Uh, but it's going to be more difficult. So if I just put a button, I can just put it. Uh, and this should work. Check me. But it will not do anything. So if you want to do something with this, you need to define a function, which is going to be, in this case, the function. So in Python, uh, uh, you can define these anonymous functions uh, in which is going to define what the uh, what this function is going to do, and if here I have uh, I have a variable which this is going to star. Uh, sorry, this is going to how do you say store the value of this variable. This is going to be click. This is going to be a function. Uh, sorry, a variable that will change over time. And when I click it, I need to define what I'm going to do with this variable. So in this case, I'm going to set it to true. So it was false and it was going to be true. And therefore, to access the value of this uh, variable, I need to put click value. And then I just define what I'm going to do later, which is going to be hey there. So this should be the same as the other one. Okay, so. Definitely. It should click again. That's a thing. It should be fine. It's quite reasonable. And but it could uh, this go back to fine. uh pass. No, because the lambda uh, set clicked to true. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. So, <laughs> so the 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 whole uh, thing is uh, okay. We it's significantly more harder. Let's say this very basic app. So I think this is true uh, at the beginning, but let's do something uh, a little bit, uh, which I think is re simil, uh, reasonable, which is, let's say that your application is a little bit 
Can I ask for a few more details about the yeah. best example? So when you click, does it refresh the whole page or does it no. manage to it find, managed to find out which component? Exactly. Because uh, when you look at its Python code, so that means that it's not fully evaluated, but it's transferred on the client side. I don't know this uh, the, 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 how it manages, but it's supposed to be React reactive React style. Uh, but that's thing. But uh, if clause is actually translated into uh, into the HTML code that is broadcasted to the I don't know. know. I don't know. Sorry. You didn't try to see the source code of uh, the page. Uh, no, no. <laughs> so let let's uh, so let's assume. I'm going to assume that your application is more than just one button. So if I add a new button in my uh, Streamlit app, run it, uh, and I click it, and I click it here. What should it happen? People who have not uh, seen Streamlit, because if you have seen Streamlit, you know what happens. Nothing. So nothing to me is what should happen, but something happens. Mm. Why? If people in, who love Streamlit, and this is, uh, they know <laughs> that what happens here is that it will rerun the whole application. So the first time I click, it becomes this component true, but later it will not become this component true anymore. <laughs> so this to me is unintuitive, but this is my perspective. And I know that a lot of people disagree with me maybe. Uh, so let me find uh, what will be the solution. The solution to this in Streamlit is um, and to, to, just to be sure that I understand, if you write something like uh, if uh, st button another button mm -hmm. uh, st text uh, blah blah, it will be the same. So it will put blah blah but remove a there or yeah. it should yeah like this. It should normally try to understand this nasty form of logic. <laughs> Let's see that it's uh, running. It should last me rerun, I guess. Okay. I click okay. hey there. Hello. I click hola. Uh, I click hey there. That's simply disgusting. <laughs> so to me, personally, the first time I saw this, I said, okay. <laughs> and later you know that the answer is that Streamlit is doing this. So now you don't need you cannot uh, just, you need to keep uh, store this state. So to store the state, you need to define, you need to define similar to before a function. This function will uh, store the state, which is going to be called uh, session state, ST session state. Mm. And to, to store it, you need to first see that it is not in the session state and then uh, define a value, which is going to be false. So you add one button and you add uh, a lot of lines of code related to states. Okay, you may argue that it's similar to the other one, but one advantage of the other one is that you can uh, have this uh, nice thing, which is called uh, basically this reactive variable, which is storing the state. You can just set it. So this is uh, something uh, nice. And here you are defining the state. So basically you are decoupling state from component. In Streamly, they are both together. And that's nice because you can easily create uh, components, but it's not nice when you just want to, I mean, when your application grows. And excuse me, but uh, maybe I'm anticipating, but for example, if you have another, page of your application when where there is also a variable that is called clicked yes will there be some clashes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's why you need to oh. so in, in this will be a dictionary actually st session state is a dictionary which you can access uh, also with this uh, i don't know what's the name uh, with dot uh, oh. but it's a dictionary so you are storing all the things and that means that there will be problems so 
and you are indeed anticipating because uh, okay let's first uh, show what what's uh, so in solara if i just want to do a button i just put uh, another button and uh, i made a mistake so this shouldn't work And if I click, and it's normal because the state has been stored here in click. Mm -hmm. So it's not uh, stored in the component. Now, if I want to, if I want to, if I go back to the stream lead case, they are combined, which means that now if I define in this button, I call it the same as the other one. Duplicate widget. You are duplicating the widget. There are multiple identical widgets with the same key, which means since you are not, uh, these are coupled, the state and the and the components are coupled, you need to define a key. And that means that now I will need to, sorry for that, define a key, which can be key equal something. And this should work. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, I need to. Because by default, the key is automatically generated from exactly. the text of the button. Okay. And now this should work. Okay. But as you see, we had to care care about keys. We had to care about the session states. While here, if I just put click me. This should have no trouble whatsoever because the state has been decoupled from the from the uh, component. Okay, so this uh, this is uh, something that I wanted to show, which is related to the state. Now let's try to uh, get back to another uh, thing. These are the things that I already show. Okay, one, one other thing which is uh, uh, which is nice in Solada is you can define components. So this is what I am doing here. So in this case, I'm not calling it page. Right, I'm reserving this for later. I'm here. I'm just going to call this process. Uh, sorry, I need to go back one. And here I am defining, and I want to select one option from a set of options. Uh, so here I'm going to use a function which is called select, and it's going to uh, run a process if I run one of these three methods. This is. Uh, so basically, if I take a method, it will take three times, three seconds, sorry, and then it should display result, okay? And now if I define a, a page now in which I want to compare these three methods, uh, this should run, let's say I put the method B, method A, method I don't know which one I put before. Uh, mm -hmm. But basically, you see that it is running. And normally, each of these components is running independently. So let's go back to Streamlit. So in Streamlit, Okay, in Streamlit, okay, so the first thing to notice here 
is that in Streamlit, I need to call uh, this process, each of these processes with a key, as I mentioned before, otherwise it will complain because all these selections didn't, uh, are going to have the same name. Mm -hmm. So you already have to add these uh, keys. And then the second thing is that if now I run this, let's say option A, it start running. If I call now option B, it will run, 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 run. And if you call option C, you will see that this is running, 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 running. And normally it takes nine seconds. Why? <laughs> because each ah, oh, time, oh. each time it's going to rerun the whole application, <laughs> which means that each time I, I select another option, this will rerun one, two, three, four. Okay, it took less a little bit. Ah, this is because I, I, I already put the solution, sorry. If normally you will, uh, if I put like this, this is the normal thing. You will see that this will run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I, if I change something in my application, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I guess at some point, okay. <laughs> And that's a big problem. <laughs> now, to be fair, and this is something, they recently incorporated the experimental fragment, which simulates or does the same as the other one, which is uh, now it should rerun each of these components independently. But to be honest, this is still experimental. It, it, start, it was incorporated three months ago. And uh, most of the people, if you took to most of the people who work on Streamly, they do not know this, this feature. So if you know somebody who works on with Streamlit, tell it about this feature and, and uh, you will make a friend. So, so you see this, okay, you, you, st you still need to worry about all these uh, keys. You still need to worry about this uh, component. Okay, the other thing which is nice about Solara uh, is that you can easily uh, add things. Uh, for example, style. So let's say that I want to call the, this function. Ah, sorry, no, it's not about style, sorry, it's React style. So if, if I want to uh, do this application, this for people who work in IP widgets like uh, Fabian or, or others, this should be quite uh, standard. This is uh, the interact that uh, Fabian showed last time. Uh, but for people working with Streamly, this is impossible. Why? Because, because it is impossible. <laughs> I mean, there is no, when I type, this is going to change my variable and it will immediately uh, call the method that is called using that variable to, to display me the text. Mm -hmm. But in, in Streamly, this is not possible. And that was one of the reasons, to be honest, that was one of the main reasons why I started using uh, Simly, uh, Solara Solaracel, because I wanted to do a tokenizer. And I said tokenizer should be relatively straightforward to do. And uh, uh, I should be able to do it in Streamlit. But how surprised I was not to be able to. So I, as I type, this will trans transform this into machine language. If I call this uh, as machine language, uh, I can obtain uh, the words and I can search tokens. So anyway, I mean, all this interaction, it's simply not possible in uh, Streamly. And not only interaction from the user, for example, here I'm calling a language model to generate a knowledge graph. So let's say that uh, I'm going to say uh, Fabian, uh, loves Solara and Streamlit. And normally now it's going to be the language model which is going to uh, change the variable. And as the variable changes, it immediately plug into a figure. So as the variable changes, it creates a new figure. So, uh, so this is the sort of interaction that is simply impossible in Streamlit. And that was the main reason why, to be honest, why I started using uh, Solara. 
Other nice thing of Solara is customization. So you can easily customize uh, things in Solara. Uh, one thing is, uh, for example, here I just uh, changed the color of the button. I put it uh, light green. I change it with the style. I change the color inside. I change the text that is displayed. No problem. I just put style and I put a little bit of CS CSS. I don't know, to be honest, much CSS uh, uh, about styling, but I know a little bit like uh, color, background color, etc. cetera, and uh, font family, okay. And uh, well, you can also do more uh, sophisticated case uh, with CSS, you can define classes, uh, et cetera. But so you can do very simple, uh, I mean, all the styling, which is simply impossible to do in Streamlit. And I know that some people will uh, say uh, that this is not true, but it is true. No, I know this is that, so uh, Streamlit has a few options, very limited. And uh, the only true option to simulate something like this, it is looking at the elements in Firefox or in uh, your uh, browser, start looking at what's the name and then adding a CSS to point to that, which is to me, it's uh, crazy from a developer point of view. I mean, if you just want to change the color of a button, you shouldn't be looking at the browser and trying to pinpoint uh, what's the right button. I mean, but okay, this is my opinion. So Solara accept, uh, so for people who love IP widgets, so this is a widget that you probably have seen. Uh, this is plot right. And this should be plot left. Uh, I'm sorry. Plot left. Uh, that you know from Fabian's presentation. And uh, you can also, uh, so we here we don't have re reactive uh, react, but you can define controls similar to the ones from IP widgets, which are actually the same as IP widgets. And uh, you can have a uh, Normally, this this I run it, and normally this should uh, this should run, and this should change both, and this should change only one. Which means that, uh, which means that now your IP widget, uh, you can run it also in Solara, no problem. And that means that instead of sending the notebook, you can just send a link to deploy it because later you can, uh, similar to this, uh, you can, uh, how do I create a new, how about this? You can host. So this was from my previous uh, app, but uh, you can see that I would have done the same for the other one and you just share it. So you, you don't need to, I mean, uh, the manager of my manager doesn't need to be installing requirements uh, that the widget didn't work, uh, that the Python was not compatible, it's just a link. And as IP widget uh, has these uh, components that Fabian showed, you can also uh, find that they also have their own components, which means that uh, now you can uh, do the same, but with their components. But this, uh, as you prefer. I mean, if uh, if you prefer the IP widgets one, to be honest, perhaps the IP widgets ones, the Greek letters were nicer. <laughs> But okay, uh, this should uh, change things and this should change uh, both. I oh, know this should change only this. Yeah. Okay, and I took significantly more time than what I was expecting for Solaria, but it's okay. Okay, so now in Solaria you can run IP widgets. So wouldn't it be great if we had an easy way to create our own widgets that then we could display in Solaria? So if we could create Jupyter widgets that then we can put into Solara. And this is where any, any widget comes. So any widget, it's a package. Uh, it can be installed with uh, pip install uh, any widget. And uh, this is what we're going to do. So let me first start with a motivation. So, so let's look at uh, a data set. So this is Cars data set, very popular. Uh, I need to run this, I guess. Okay, and one way to look at the data on this uh, on this uh, data 
is to use uh, Seaborn, which I think was also shown in one of the seminars. Yes. So you can uh, you can basically put uh, one with respect to the other. However, this plot has some limits, some limitation. No, ideally, perhaps I would really like to know which are the cars who have a, a large horsepower and low miles per gallon, or the opposite. And I would like to include that with this. So this is a little bit uh, unfortunate, but. Uh, fortunately, there exists uh, something a little bit uh, better, which is uh, out there, uh, which is a declarative language. So this is another language. And here you can, uh, the nice thing is that, well, one thing is that you can look at some particular points and see, for example, okay, uh, this is these are the values, but perhaps I'm interested in other characteristics from these uh, cars. So perhaps I am interested on in these cars, but perhaps I want to look at other characteristics. Uh, so here, for example, they are putting uh, origins, uh, et cetera. Okay. So and most people, to be honest, to be fair, uh, this is important. And most people think that this is visualization. So they say, okay, this is the end of visualization. Visualization stops here. <laughs> and that is not true. <laughs> so if I want to access this, I would like to access something that is, uh, so basically this is taking Python code and it's displaying it in JavaScript, right? Jupyter notebooks are JavaScript in the front end. And any widget is, a way to uh, access JavaScript or to share, to, to make a portal between JavaScript and Python. So let's start with a very basic example, which is a button again. So this is uh, a very uh, basic uh, widget, which is this button, which now when I click it, it will count. So there is nothing uh, particularly interesting about this button. Except that here I have defined uh, all the components in JavaScript. And here I have something which I'm sharing, which is count. So count will be a variable that I share. So in particular, if I now, I have this counter, I can count, tuk, 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 and I can access what's the value of that widget. I can access this, and not only this, but I can, for example, change from Python, JavaScript. <laughs> so it is creating a portal, uh, a gate between the JavaScript world and the Python world. And this, I think, is very cool. And OK, so this was uh, related to this button, but we don't care about buttons. So let's, uh, ah, so a small little thing just to, to show. Uh, so in this code here, the only thing I added was I added some uh, con confetti library. And I added when I click the button, so when the counter changes, I'm going to add some confetti. Okay, this is just to say that you can modify the JavaScript and you can also modify the CSS. So actually here I'm running, uh, I'm going to uh, show a different button, which is going to be blue. Ah, this is horrible. Uh, let's <laughs> see if I can. Ah, but this will, when I hover over, it will be green. The, blue, the background color is blue. How about light blue? Like blue. It's a little bit better. Okay, and, and now you can see that, do you see or not? Mm. So I added a new, with very, very easily, I added something to the button that was not inside the button, was not part of the button. And I can also 
normally change the button. This is uh, okay, this is the same as before. And since I have JavaScript, I could take a JavaScript code. Do you know uh, what is this draw? Is Remy here? He's connected. Yes, I'm here. So you could import draw JavaScript and style, create a Jupyter Notebook widget, which is going to be called Deal the Cards, which will deal the cards. And in particular, so this is uh, a new widget. In particular, I modify a little bit Remy's code, sorry, Remy, to uh, just uh, deal a certain amount of cards, which is the number of cards that I want. So this is, so value will be the value that I can access. Let's say I change it to five. Normally it should be smaller than 13. And I will uh, display the number of cards. So, and this is now a Jupyter widget, which means it can run in a solar application as well. So I could have my own application running this. Okay, but that was not my original problem. So my original problem was, I want to access this data. So how can I do that? So I could define a function which will share two things from uh, JavaScript. So I'm going to take from JavaScript of the notebook, I'm going to take the selection. So when I interact with this uh, widget, I could make a selection. So for example, I do, I select this. And from this widget, I'm going to get what are the values that I selected. So the values are going to be horsepower between 94 and 179. And the miles per gallon are going to be from 20 to uh, 26, something. So I extracted now from JavaScript back to Python, what was the selection? And that means that now I can plot this, right? In particular, I mean, I can extract just simply the data, but I could select, let's say I have a selection. Here is a selection that I chose, uh, why not? And I'm go I have the data frames. So after I have this data frame, I'm going to filter uh, by these two values and this should work. So I could generate, uh, for example, here it's uh, the count of record. This is a histogram. I could change whatever I want. Huh? So here I could change uh, another characteristics. Here is just an histogram, but I could change it to a plot between two variables. Because I already have access to this selection. Okay, and now with this new widget, I can have, I can change whatever I want from, so you see, you can, uh, look. So now I have access to the data and I can continue my work. So I can select, get back uh, this, uh, these uh, elements and then do whatever I want. In particular, I could uh, do a plot. Here I'm, I could select uh, what are the buttons I selected. This should work. Uh, let's not do that because uh, Excel is, okay, I think it works. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, but later I could also do some machine learning and this is something I'm going to show later, uh, which I didn't, uh, let me see. Just one more. I think uh, in time, I think I'm okay now. Yeah, 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 you have 12 minutes left. Yes. Uh, so I wanted to do some uh, machine learning uh, in particular. I mean, uh, here we don't care about this, I think. So 
So it will require a little bit of uh, code, but not too much. And now, uh, so this is, I'm using a, uh, I'm using this draw data, which is uh, from uh, a guy. Basically you can draw data in a Jupyter notebook or in a application, solar application. And this, you can also select, for example, uh, do some logistic regression between two sets. And here I have taken the data. I continue now and I can do machine learning later with this data. And now this is very nice because now I can show, for example, okay, so this is this uh, logistic regression works uh, very well, but if I want to divide uh, this problematic uh, two sets, logistic regression will not work. It will suffer. It will try to divide these two sets with a line, but it will not manage to. Uh, and for example, I could show another thing, which is a classifier, and I could say, okay, in reality, you could uh, do a decision tree classifier, which will perfectly uh, divide these two sets. And here are the boundaries. Uh, so all of this by taking from JavaScript, I can show something which is interactive. Uh, and it's not simply visualization in the sense of here is the data, I show you this uh, versus this. No, here I'm really going all the way through the machine learning model and throwing. Uh, I, I could also add here, uh, what are the values that I generated, for example, and they, I can even download them, so. And uh, okay, so all of this to say, uh, any widget allow us to do uh, all of these things. And with Solara, you now can share uh, this, uh, or, well, you can create your own widgets and you can uh, uh, now create your own application. Okay, so let's let's go to the conclusions and then we have some few minutes for questions, I guess. So for simple labs, still it is extremely easy to get started. Solara is considerably more complicated for simple apps. <laughs> no, I don't know if considerable, but it, it's a little bit more complicated. State manager, state management, I think it's more, it's easier to understand in Solara than in Streamlit. Reusable components is easier in Solara than in Streamlit, although Streamlit recently incorporated these experimental fragments, so you should check them. I mean, I just showed you, but you can share it with your friends. Customization is easier in Solara than in Streamlit. Solara, uh, sorry, Streamlit has good defaults. So this is important, but when you have seen a little bit of Streamlit applications, you immediately recognize Streamlit. When you see somebody is presenting to you something, you know it's Streamlit, you know 100% of you is Streamlit, which may be something that you want or may not, but it is uh, easy to recognize. Solara can be run in Jupyter Notebook, like I show here. Jupyter Lab, voila, Google Collab. So sometimes I, if I, if I have a few times instead of uh, Twitter, instead of Facebook, I just uh, open a collab. I start uh, playing with uh, Solara, and it's <laughs> very easy to get started. IP widgets can be run in Solara. Uh, you can do React style application in Solara. And here are the two main points which I think uh, uh, are very compelling for Streamlit, which is documentation. The documentation is much better in Streamlit. And clearly network effects favors Streamlit. So they have a huge community, they have custom components, and uh, also deployment is much easier because uh, all, the, all the things that like Hugging Face or Plumber or whatever you want to deploy your application, Streamlit has, it's very easy. While in Solara, you usually need to do Docker and stuff like that, which you may not want. But this is because there is already a big community. And the conclusion for the second part is that any widget really simplifies creating and publishing uh, Jupyter widgets. Uh, I easily created a Jupyter widget with the code of Remy. Sorry, Remy. Mm -hmm. uh, it opened the bridges portal gate between JavaScript and Python through stateful properties that both uh, JavaScript and Python have access to. And any widget allows to create uh, uh, custom widgets. And these widgets can be run in Solara. Uh, as I show here, the other one was a, a Solara app. 
And uh, therefore, creating your own components for Solara is very easy with a little bit of uh, JavaScript and uh, Copilot, you can easily <laughs> create. And uh, this, uh, and there, and you also get uh, for free the widgets for Solar for Jupyter. So that's it for me. I think I have uh, seven minutes for questions. Uh, I think in, in any case, you uh, there is no uh, way to build uh, widgets in Python for uh, Jupyter Node, I think. Uh, I know that the, the easiest way before was to create cookie templates, and I don't know, a lot of it was very difficult. Uh, but here, uh, the idea is that you can, uh, I mean, yeah, I, the answer is no, there, there is no, I, at least I'm not aware that there are ways to create widgets uh, simply with Python. Uh, I wanted to show uh, the code. The but... question is, uh, what about the second fastest growing uh, library? Yes, Gradio. The blue one. The Gradio. Gradio? Or... Yeah. Yes, so Gradio, I had actually a few slides, but I, I didn't. Uh, uh, so Gradio to me, it's very, uh, it, well, it, installing is very easy uh, and it's relatively easy, but to me it's tasks which are very standard in machine learning. So for example, this is a Gradio app, Okay, this is perhaps not the easiest Gradio app. Uh, sorry, the most. Uh, so this this Gradio app will take a text. It will take input text, output text. It will give a title and a description, and that's it. And you will get you will get a. Perhaps I can run it even now in a Jupyter notebook. Can I? Uh, Try if this works. I think it should. So Gradio, it's um, it's great to me, but it is mainly for things which I need to put through. I guess. Yes. But it's mainly for things which are relatively standard. Which means so here uh, you can see that it it creates. Uh, So it creates an input text, an output text. So here, if I write hello, I don't have reactivity. And I will need to wait, but it will uh, display. So you, you get input, you get output. And it's very nice uh, if you want to, if you want to, for example, generate some, some uh, application which has some transformers. Like for example, you can create a pipe, uh, a sentiment analysis app just by these three lines, four lines, five lines, sorry. Uh, but it's relatively for standard tasks. So you get uh, an input and you will display one output immediately right next to it, and that's it. So you take, for example, a text and you're going to generate an image. This is very easy in, in, in radio. You just write, uh, you put text, you put what's the model that you have behind and you put the image and it will generate for you an app, but it's not, you are not building the app. So if you want something more complex, you then need to enter into blocks and all this uh, weird, uh, I mean, to me, it's a strange uh, world. So to me, it's great if you have a task which is very standard in machine learning, segmentation, uh, clustering, I don't know. I mean, uh, if you have a standard uh, machine learning task, radio is great, you don't need more, but for, things which can be more playful, it's uh, a little bit limiting, I think. I've yeah. got two uh, kind of meta questions. Yeah. Uh, first one is, uh, what do you think about Rise with JupyterLab? Is it good now? Or, uh -huh. 
I think it was okay. No, I don't know if you are the you are the author, so you tell me. But uh, I still go back to notebook uh, six point four, so I can do the whole version. Yeah, but to me it was because uh, I wanted to. Sorry, I wanted to share the three things. Uh, ideally, instead of going back and forth, I wanted to show here the uh, the application. Here the the terminal and here the and this I cannot do it in a not normal notebook. But try to use the new eyes, which has less features than the other one. Yeah. And other questions, so it's kind of classic. Uh, in practice, where do you run your servers? Uh, which means where where do you run uh, your uh, your web applications ah. you want to display if, if you want to deploy them i have a lot of uh, uh, done like in hugging face for uh, uh, playful uh, applications uh, uh allow you to run your own web pages with this type of exactly page. so this is uh, for example the interactive plot which is the one i show uh, i know this interactive plot is the one i did for the ip widget uh, so this is a web page and this normally should uh, should uh, should be the uh, normally should react. Ah, okay, now it's react. And uh, see, and uh, here are the Solara one with the same thing. So and this is, to deploy them, uh, I have. I mean, you can look at the the files I have here. Uh, I basically create a Docker file uh, with the but, so it is a little bit more complicated. I mean, but if you copy paste this, it should work. Uh, you, you don't need to, because the name of the app is app, I think. Uh, the requirements are called requirements. The app is called, uh, uh, ah, no, I hear I call it multi-page, but it's okay. I mean, <laughs> uh, so so that's why it's a little bit more complicated than a similar tab, but uh, normally it should, uh, perhaps this one is. Easy. So it's the spaces in the big place. That are yeah. Really good, but okay. So this is for free if you want to run uh, something which is not uh, corporate. Uh, you see, you can uh, you can deploy it there. But there is also, I also use Plumber, but but because they gave me they gave me free credits. So yeah, here here it should be the app. You see, here is the app. So I just call it app, and then it should work. Requirements, and it should work. And you just copy paste it. And down three points, it's basically your command line. Other questions? On the bridge, probably. On the bridge, chat. Ah, uh, chat, yes. Uh, nothing on the chat. Uh, no, uh, okay. I just send the, okay. Okay. the links to the. Um, Sessions about Seaborn and iPy widget. Oh, nice. Okay, so let's wrap up. Thank you, Alonso, again. Have a good lunch and uh, see you next year for the next uh, season of the reading uh, reading groups. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>